Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, a show where a couple of blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel and uh, once again in the studio is Alex. Mate, welcome. Of course, it's been a while since we've had a flood of motorsports. Of course, we had the Olympics, but now that's out of the way. Now that Ray Gunn is breakdancing her way out of oh, Paris geez. for good, uh, motorsports returned. Thank God for that. Uh, how have you been, Alex? Um, so, so we've had a busy weekend ourselves, actually. I'm good. It took 30 seconds to mention breakdancing the Olympics. Great. I had to. It, it, it's not even written in the contract. You have to do it once. Right. Yeah, every organization in the world is just mentioning absolutely break dancing. Anyway, I'm good. It's it's uh yeah, nice weekend uh, back full of motorsport. Um pretty much everything besides Formula 1 was on this weekend. So um yeah. Um, absolutely. A and lot of action. Exactly. And uh you you had a busy Saturday. Well, we had a busy Saturday. We, we started off yep, with we. uh traveling to Taylor Bend. Devon uh was able to have a test day with the Zarek 8 which from the sounds of it went pretty well at least from when we he's were there happy, as well he's a happy boy he's a happy boy which means good things so i'm looking forward to that that's only going to be in a couple of weeks time the actual event at the mm -hmm. bend for yep. round four um of course you would have been stoked that port won the showdown <laughs> of course so if you if he does sound a little bit uh, that's it's because kind of he shouted to his vocal cords shut down yeah pretty much. um so there you go um but uh, with that being said, let's dive into the first category of the night that we're talking about, MotoGP. Uh, of course, uh, they actually were the only series on uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, where they raced at Silverstone. Of course, um, Bastianini dominated the Silverstone race. This time around in Austria, though, it was in favor of his teammate, Paco Bagnaia, who is now five points clear of Jorge Martin after Jorge actually got a long lap penalty in the sprint, um, which ultimately, unfortunately, actually ruined uh, what could have been an exciting race, uh, that sprint race. Yeah. Um, and got to be honest, there was a, in terms of the main race itself, there was a hint of excitement until uh, there was a one and a half second gap between the two. <laughs> That's very true. Um, yeah, it was a dominant weekend by Pecco. Um, and, uh, yeah, just making sure that he still is, uh, the reigning champion and hopefully we'll go three times around. So, well, basically um, MotoGP is, um, you can win the championship if you don't crash. Um, basically, it's not really a battle on track. It's more who can survive on track the most. No, the longest. true. And unfortunately um, for our boy, Jack Miller, oh my gosh, bad to work. how Who's good was it to fifth? see him in fourth and fifth and, and then on the ground end, and then next minute, 18th. So yeah. it just shows Jack Miller's doing Jack Miller stuff. Oh. Um, although he's been poised for a potential seat, hasn't he? Is, is, I, I don't know if I, I haven't heard 100% on that. There's potential. Um, there is some talks. So when we know more, we will talk about that. But I don't know if he, he definitely obviously doesn't deserve that main ride. Um, so it'll be inter interesting to see where he goes. But uh, what a weekend for Marquez. Um, crashed out uh, sitting in P2 on the, in the sprint and unfortunately DNF'd. Uh, ran wide at the ma on the main race. Um, he uh, can't remember who he crashed into. Um, but Morbidelli, I think. Yeah, Morbidelli. Yep, yep. Um, but he recovered quite well. He uh, put on a... Yeah. He is a recovery king, everyone keeps well, saying. fourth place. Um, not too bad in the Grand Prix after the yeah, lap one incident. So, um, I don't know if you saw this, but he had, he actually had an issue with the uh, I don't know what they call it, but the procedure to start the race, the bike hunkers down, like the launch yeah, yeah. launch control kind of deal. I don't mm. know, what the, there's a name for it, but I was, it's blanked out of my mind. Um, but yeah, he had issues with that, and then all of a sudden the lights were going red, and then mm. he just went, and obviously his bike wasn't set up, so yeah, lost okay. a lot of spots off the line, and then yeah, contact with more, but Daly didn't help. But um, they both did not too bad. <laughs> no, considering they were pretty much at the back of the field. Exactly. Um, I think he was down at 18th um, at that point, or somewhere around there. Yeah. After to come one. back fourth, and even Morbidelli uh, come back to eighth. So yeah, yeah pretty not, happy not, with that. Not too bad considering. But uh, the thing is with him though, um, he he always tends to do well in the races. Like he's yeah. he's insane. But unfortunately, yeah. he doesn't put himself in the position. Um, to actually convert that into a win. Um, for well, for example, yeah, he qualified decently. Yeah, this time well, around. he just had that poor start. But other times he's qualified 14th, for example. Um, but 14th yeah. was actually quite common for him. I don't know why, but um, must be a lucky number. 
Yeah, well, something lucky because um, yeah, every time he started fourteenth, he got on the podium, so that mm. was weird. But um, yeah, for once he actually was on the front row. But you know, these things happen, I suppose. I want to shout out Bastianini, who's like obviously I missed the last episode. We we're talking about Murder mm. GP at uh, the Spanish, uh, sorry, Silverstone, and since <laughs> since then the last couple of rounds, he's just like been there with Bagnaia the whole time. He's he clean Absolutely. swept the Silverstone round. Um, funny enough, he's done this after he's got his contract for next <laughs> year, which I find ironic. Um, usually, you're meant to do these performances to get a contract, but he, uh, yeah, got the contract then started performing. It's like well. the literal opposite reverse of Perez. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> the complete opposite of Sergio Perez. Um, but yeah, no, shout out to Enea. Done really, really well with the last couple of rounds, and hopefully, he continues it. Well, the crucial thing about that is, is he's not making any mistakes right now. Compared to no. Martin and Peko, uh, last round crashed out. Yep, yep. And of course, Marquez crashed out too. So the championship fight, yes, it's only five points between Peko and uh, Jorge. Yep. But Ine is just sitting right there behind waiting um, for something. Like he's, he's slowly catching up. Each time someone crashes, he's catching up. Um, very true, very so true. the beast or the tire master, if you call him. <laughs> Um, keeps up what he's doing. He's definitely going to be in the fight between um, and as we head into the final stage, like stages of the season. Yep. Um, so he is going to be very interesting. But what a championship fight! Like you, nowhere else in the. I don't. I think this is the only series where it's literally neck and neck. Um, like I couldn't believe with the sprint race after Martin got his penalty, they were literally neck and neck on points. Um, Bagnaia and um, Martin. So it's just incredible racing in the series. I love it. Um, that's the beauty about two wheelers, I suppose, is uh, the amount of racing yeah, you, you can, can do with it. You can yeah ride close to the the guy in front or behind, and uh, it always it MotoGP, despite what track it is, what round, what weather, it's always entertaining. It always puts a show on. Doesn't it's always it? great. Um, and it it was also weird to see them back in their normal liveries as well. It, yeah, it took me an, a minute to get used to it. I found it really interesting when they did the liveries. They didn't do it for the sprint, but they did it for the race. That's what we were saying. I, I did oh, yeah? not like that one bit. I, I no, it was weird. Have it all weekend. Because I watched the sprint and didn't even click to me. Oh, this is a silver <laughs> center, not this weekend, but yeah. didn't even click to me. It's retro round. And then the next day I'm like, Who's the ah oh, <laughs> right? Gotcha. Yeah, and then everyone pretty much has a white bike. The, the yeah, day well, after back in the day, they weren't very creative. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I suppose. But um, it was nice to see them back on uh, the normal liveries, and yeah, I could actually tell who was who this week. Exactly, exactly. Because even then, they didn't even um, in the leaderboard. All the colors were still the same. Yeah, as well. So that caught me off guard. Oh, so, uh, right, right, right. Um, yep, yep, even yep. better that they're back to normal. So that's fantastic. Yes. But, Not that we don't like retro, right? Just. No, no, I love, yeah, absolutely love it. Actually, they probably did it the best in terms of, like, well, for starters, I'm pretty sure that I think uh, racing series actually do a retro round. The only one that enforced it, pretty much. I, well, I don't know if NASCAR it's... does anything like that. I think they did one in Richmond, I think. I mean, NASCAR is you got too many sponsors. Oh, plus they change liveries like they change underwear. Yeah, they, well, they pretty much have a separate, yeah, they have a different <laughs> livery for every race. Exactly. They do it, you know. Brad Jones racing style. Exactly. Um, but I'll, we we did touch base on it when you weren't here, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to see uh, retro round being enforced everywhere, like supercars, yep. and F, especially F1 done. even too. F1 hasn't... Didn't really even need done. to ask me the question. Done. But easy. Done. Fantastic. Easy. I just I I spoke on what, his behalf. The problem Fantastic. is for, for a team like Ferrari would be, well, the car's just red, so... But there's so many different variants. Deal. Like the, um, they could have, li like for example, this year they could have done the 63. Well, I was um, quite worried with was it 63, um, the white and blue one. Oh god, yeah, they could have done that. They could have, but they didn't. They didn't. They ruined it. Um, what uh, was kind of surprising to me is obviously these MotoGP teams, especially a team like Trackhouse, is their first year. Mm. How they actually were able to make a retro livery full stop. Yeah. Because you meant to make it off, you know, old st old style bikes, and you know, they're a brand new team. So, I think yeah, that's what would struggle with Formula <laughs> One. But, um, yeah. Do you know what would be cool though for Formula One? Because yeah. every single team pretty much has been bought from a different team. Yes. For example, Red Bull could very well either no. run a 2010 livery or a Jaguar livery. Yeah. Sauber could literally run a Red Bull livery. 
<laughs> that will if confuse you wanna, everyone. If you want to be technical about it, sure. Exactly, but uh, no, that, it, it's something that um, it's it's cool to see everyone like um, celebrate the history of the yeah. of the sport, and um, I'm just, especially the new new blokes coming through the yep. field who weren't born well, since 2005, growing up watching um, some of those liveries. I think the exactly. the Ducati one was pretty good. Yeah, the the uh, I think it was the '89, was it? Yeah, livery. I can't remember, but I it, remember. It was a an iconic time for the team. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was beautiful. Dominant. But uh, with that being said, uh, do you want to run through the quick results of uh, this week's race? Yeah, I'll go through just the Grand Prix. Uh, Paco Bagna was the victor. Ine Bastianini. Sorry, this is right? Yes. That is correct. Cool. Ine... Is not... Hang on. We've done it again. That's the championship round, I think, from looking at that. I reckon. She... No. As you were. I don't know. That is correct. Is. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've re- oh, I've looked at the I've written down the wrong thing. I don't know what's going on. Okay, for, for context. Um Hang on, that's Magello. This is Magello. Okay. What's going on? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Why has it done that? Okay, internet, by the way, has yeah. decided to prank us and give us the Magello results, thought, which happened in June. So as we try to go in our time machine go. and go forwards, uh, we're too busy talking about retro rounds. We've literally gone back around. I don't know how that anyway, happened, but now um, we're back in present day. We're back in Austria. <laughs> here we go. Well, us, the winner was still the same, thankfully. Uh, Pekka <laughs> Banyan won. Uh, Jorge Martin was second. Ine Bastianini third, rounding off a full Ducati podium. Uh, Mark Marquez fourth. Uh, Brad Binder fifth. Actually, KTM were pretty quick this weekend. I was actually impressed. The fact that even Miller was. Well, Miller up should have been fifth. Up. He should have been, but um, Miller did Miller. But it's, it's cool to see them up there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Marco Benseki in sixth. Uh, seventh was Maverick Vinales. Morbidelli in eighth. Uh, Alicia Spargo and Alex Marquez running at the 10. And shout out to Paula Spargo in 11th. Do you want to keep going the whole field? No, that's all right. Um, Paula Spargo was a wild card <laughs> and he finished ninth in the sprint and 11th in the race. Not bad, isn't it? It's pretty good. And just to, um, I want to point out Pedro Acosta too. Um, not for the right reasons either. He's just. He's just fallen back lately, um, yeah. which has been a real shame considering how hyped he was at the beginning of the year as well. It's potential that maybe he's just fatigued. Like, you know, the bikes are so much quicker and then only two years ago he was doing Moto3. Yeah. So, yeah, it could be, could literally just be fatigue. He's, mm. you know, pretty small. Well, they're all small, but, you know, he's very young and not that I'm saying he's unfit, but like... He's only 20, isn't he? My point. I think he's actually younger. Is he younger than that? I think he recently turned 20. Um, yes. No, I think you're yeah, right. A couple months ago. Well, he had the opportunity to be the youngest winner at the start of the year. Maybe that's what he was aiming for. Yeah, maybe. that's right. Yep. And maybe now he's, he's just older pushing. Now. He's like, God damn it. Yeah, I can't get the record done about it. Um, no, but he's obviously going to lead KTM for a while. Um, oh, definitely. Absolutely. If everything goes to plan. But yeah, no, quick point out. Yeah, he has fallen off a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he'll be back at the next round. But um, with that being said, we've still got heaps of rounds left. Do you reckon uh, this is going to be Bagnaia's year, or you reckon uh, Martin can actually? Because it's gone literally back and forth. Like I literally have no idea who can win this year. Well, the funny thing is, like, it's gone back and forth. Not only this year, but last year as well. We mm. came down to the last round. Um, in in Valencia, uh, I, it's too hard to predict. They've exactly. both won a race, like you said, back and forth. Um, hopefully, it does go to the last round. Um, obviously, Jorge and my team would have the home field advantage, mm. but um, yeah, anything's possible, I guess. But these two are the, the runaway contenders. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm more in, com, uh, interested in, in next year's actually, you know, with Jorge Martin ditching the Ducati. Well, actually, well, I'm, no. a, I'm a, yeah, the Marquez and Bagnaya yep, team battle, exactly. As well. the, the Ducati battle is going to be increased even more, and then you got uh, Martin on Aprilia. And a Costa in the KDM as well. Yeah, well, so it's, it's going to be quite interesting. It's going to be spicy. Very. Um, I reckon that's going to be a bit more hectic. But I hope Martin does win the championship just to just to show Ducati that, you know, I was the guy. Well, I hope Bastianini can just do it. That'll be cool. I think it's a bit too far back. <laughs> he is but... a bit mo- but like I said, um, yeah, he has it, come back it will come down to rounds. whoever makes the least mistakes from here on in. True. Um, so I guess we'll see what happens. They just got a I bit suppose. of a buffer. It's about a fifty point gap between Martin and Bastianini. But yeah, I think that obviously it'd be one of those two that win. But um, obviously I'm Italian. We're Italian here, so I hope Bagnaia does win. But 
for my team if you like it. Good. You, know, be a special you, one. you, you should have chose me. Yeah. Kind of deal. Big so, um, um, in your face, pretty much. Yeah. But uh, now that that's it for um, for Austria at least. But uh, when we return, we'll talk about something down under.